Hello developers, my name is Matt Rabel, and today I'd like to show you how to integrate Bootstrap into an Angular 9 application. I'm going to begin by showing you this GitHub repo that has all of the completed code. That's at Okta Developer, Okta Angular Bootstrap Example. And in this repository is a demo.adoc, adoc for ASCII doctor. And this is the instructions that I'm going to use to guide me and you through this screencast. So if we look at the raw version, I have an ASCII doctor plugin installed that shows a much prettier view. And what I'll show you today is how to first integrate Bootstrap into an Angular 9 app, and then convert the app to use SAS, because CSS is a little more fun when you're using SAS and there's variables and it's more like a programming language. We'll make the app look good, we'll add form validation, and then we'll write some code to develop a searchable, sortable, and pageable data table. The last part sounds hard, but actually Spring Data JPA makes that very easy. We can actually do it in under 10 lines of code, so that's thanks to Kotlin and Spring Data JPA on the back end. So this builds from a previous tutorial. If you were to read Build a CRUD app with Angular 9 and Spring Boot 2.2, you'll see how we developed that, and there's a screencast there as well. And there will also be a number of live templates I use in this. And IntelliJ live templates are basically a way to just type a few characters and spit out a whole bunch of code. So those are available in my GitHub repo at mrabel slash idea live templates. And you'll see we have some prerequisites, Node 12, Java 11, and an Okta developer account. So I'm going to put all those instructions on the left there. And then on the right, I'll make sure we have Node 12 installed. Yep, and Java 11, yes, and an Okta developer account. I already have one, but if you do not, you can go to developer.okta.com, click on create free account, and go ahead and sign up for one. Enter your email, first name, last name, and that's about it. Mine is at dev13320. You can see, and I can sign into there while we go back to these steps. So to begin, I'm gonna clone the previous tutorial that I mentioned, this Angular 9 plus Spring Boot 2.2 CRUD example. So using git clone, and we'll put that in an Okta Angular Bootstrap example directory. Oh, it already exists, because I like to practice. Try that again. And now cd into there, and go into the notes directory. That's the Angular app. If you were to look back, you can see there's notes and notes API. The notes API is a Spring Boot application written in Kotlin. So if we go into notes and do npm i, this will install all the dependencies in that project. Next, I'll integrate Bootstrap for the CSS and ng Bootstrap, which is a component library with Angular that you don't need jQuery, you can just use Angular to add behavior to Bootstrap. So npm i Bootstrap. And you don't have to specify the versions, but these are the only ones that I am certain work because I tested it. So 6.0.0, you're welcome to try some other ones, but can't guarantee everything will work. And then we'll open both projects in IntelliJ. And then we'll start by importing the Gradle build file for the Spring Boot project. So import Gradle project. And then we'll go into the notes project in in source app, app.module we will add that ngb module. So under imports, ngb module, make sure you get the one from ng bootstrap. There we are. And now we should be able to run our client using cd into the notes directory and ng serve dash o to open your default browser. So you can see it opens up my default browser, which is Firefox in this case, but it doesn't actually have anything in it. Let's look in the console and see what's in there. Oh, shows an error. So it looks like your application needs Angular localized. So we'll grab that command. We'll put this on the far left. Back to our terminal. 
and in notes we'll run ng add angular localize so ng bootstrap depends on that and now you can see our app is running and we have a login button but let's worry about making this screen look a little better so we'll put this down on the bottom here and we'll keep that Firefox on the top first thing we're gonna do need to do is add the CSS for bootstrap into our styles.css now you can see we've had some changes there let's change app component to use some of the bootstrap classes so I'll change this h1 to a nav and then we'll add some classes nav bar and nav bar expand when it's large and then we'll make it dark and we'll make the background dark as well okay so now we're getting somewhere but our title doesn't look good so let's uh let's add some classes to that we'll use navbar brand and text light now we need to wrap that around the title now we're getting somewhere and we'll put a little padding around our router outlet here so we we'll use container fluid here and we'll put some padding on the top PT3 then we'll go and grab the router outlet now we're getting somewhere and now we have you know something that looks better now I want to show you how to secure this so it's already set up using Okta for security and it's not really Okta it's OpenID Connect so any OpenID Connect provider should work to secure this particular application I'm using Spring Boot on the back end and Angular 9 on the front end and so I'm gonna go ahead and configure Spring Boot first so we have to register a new app on Okta. So we'll go to my account at dev13320. Log in there. Like I said, we're going to start with the Spring Boot app. So I'm going to add a new web application. And I'll just call it Spring Boot. And it's localhost 8080. Log in. OAuth2 code Okta. And so that's built into Spring Boot. If you were to use a different provider, you would use something other than Okta at the end. But the rest of it is standard Spring Security configuration for OAuth and OpenID Connect. So we'll go ahead and click Done. And then we can use the client ID and client secret at the bottom here to configure the security for our Spring Boot app. So we'll go into the Notes API directory and we'll create a octa.env no okay we'll just do it from here octa.env file and we'll paste those values in there so for the domain mine is dev13320.octa.com you can also find this value under api authorization servers right here issuer uri now I need my client ID and client secret. Let's grab those and the secret. Okay, and now we have the Spring Boot side of things set up, so we can source that octa.env and run Gradle boot run. And if you're to load up that app at localhost 8080, I'm already logged into Okta, so it didn't redirect me. If I go to API notes, you can see there's few notes that are already entered and if we were to go to user notes or even user you'll see all my information so that's all working on the server side now let's configure the client so we'll need to create another app for the client this will be a spa single page application and you want to make sure and use 4200 here and login redirect is 4200 implicit callback you can make this whatever you want, but you have to make sure your Angular app works with it or is configured for it. And if you don't get this right the first time, if you don't put 4200 in there, you might get a cores error, cross origin resource sharing error. You can go in here to the trusted origins and add 4200 later. If you put it in there as a base URI when you first create the app, it'll actually do it for you. And it doesn't really matter what you name it, so mine's named MySpa, and you can see I'm using 
Pixie, proof key for code exchange, the most secure form of OAuth for browser applications. And so here we have under source app auth routing, that's where everything's configured. So I can put a client ID in there, and it's already got my issuer in there from the last tutorial. So now, should have rebuilt the client, so let's try logging in, and now we're logged in. So if we were to look at the notes and create a new note, you can see that's all working. However, it doesn't look that great, so let's fix that. But first, let's actually commit our code. So we'll shut everything down here, go back to the root directory, git add, and git commit, add bootstrap, and OIDC configuration. And so the reason I did that is because now I want to convert this project to use SAS. And so if you were to do this locally and you messed up somehow or you had some issues, then uh, you could revert back and try it again. So I'm going to use SAS to customize Bootstrap. The first thing I'm going to do is run this ng-config command, which uses schematics to change the uh, extension. But we're not in the notes directory, so let's switch to that. And then let's find all the files that end in CSS. And we don't want to look in node modules because that's a big, ugly mess of source files. So um, it still looked in there, so I forgot to add that. You can see we only have three files. So if you wanted, you can manually rename them, but you can also use a rename command and just substitute for CSS, SCSS, and you can see it renamed those files for me. If I were to look at version control, you can see that it's removed some and added some. Now we can replace all references to those CSS files with uh, using sed in our source app directory. And then also in the angular.json file, there is a reference to styles.css. So there's two of those. Change the first one and the second one to SCSS. And then also the styles refers to Bootstrap. We can change this to SCSS and SCSS from Bootstrap. And the reason you might want to do that is so you can override some of the default variables that Bootstrap uses. So let's see an example of what that looks like. In the source directory, we can create a variables SCSS file we could override some of bootstraps for instance its primary and its secondary colors and there's lighten and darken macros that you can use that makes it very easy to adjust things in styles.scss we can import before bootstrap variables now if we were to go back to our app and run it and do serve start our back end while we're here you can see it changes the primary and secondary colors. So that's pretty nice, but we don't really need that right now because I'm not very good at picking colors. So we'll comment that out, take it back to what it was, and now let's make things beautiful. I'm going to start by changing the app.component.html to use a better looking navbar. So it already has a navbar, but let's, let's put one with some menus in it. So like I said, I'm using live templates for this. You can install my live templates and have the same BS navbar command. And you'll notice now we have this navbar up here and we're using an angular icon that was already in the project. And we have this toggler that should allow us to toggle this menu. And you don't see the menu right now, but if you make it bigger, it shows home octodev in the GitHub repo for the project as well as a logout button since we're already logged in. And then it'll say if we're logged out to please log in to manage your notes. Right? And you'll notice that there's still that login button there. Well, we can remove it or you could leave it. But in home component, we'll want to take out the login and the logout buttons. Now you won't see them. So the one problem with this 
is that this menu doesn't actually work. So to fix that, we can use some components from NG Bootstrap. So in the button, which toggles it, we'll add a click event handler, and we'll say is collapsed equal to the opposite of whether it's collapsed. And then we can use IntelliJ to create that variable for us, and we'll set it to true. So it's collapsed by default. And then we'll go ahead and change this notes to be capitalized so it looks a little better. And still not working. Let's go back to our template and we need to use the NGB collapse directive here and say it's all dependent on whether that variable is collapsed or not. So in this case, we can now click it and you'll see we have an expandable menu for our mobile application. Now let's make the note list a little better looking. So log in here, view our notes, and you can see there's some things that need to be fixed here. So we'll start by going into our list, and we have this breadcrumb here that's floating at the top. And so this was all generated from Angular CRUD, which is a module on NPM. So if I went to Angular CRUD and just Googled for it, that's an NPM module. And so if you were to look at its GitHub homepage, you can see how the site looks. So when it generates the default templates, they actually look good on this site, but they need some work in ours. So that's what we're, we're doing here is fixing that. So now we have our menu that looks better on the top. We're using this card here, and we need some different classes. So let's do a card body, and then this can be a card title here and we'll take out that div and we'll make this into card text. Okay, so now we're starting to get somewhere and we can take out this div and this doesn't need to be a card. That goes to the text, so we'll move that to the bottom and reformat things and add some divs down here at the bottom. So now we're getting somewhere, it's starting to look better. You'll notice this form here doesn't quite look good on mobile or it takes up a lot of space. So let's make that into an inline form. Bootstrap has excellent form support form inline. There we are, that makes sense. And now things are a little squished together so we can use some margin classes to clean that up a bit. So on this title here, we can say that we want some margin on the left and we want it to be small. And we want some margin on the right. And we want it to be a little bigger. So now things are looking better. And this one I think should probably be two as well. Okay. And then we have this feedback. We'll give some padding around that too with the margin too, or some margin around it. All right, so now let's go into our form and you can see that one needs some work too. So again, we'll take off that float right at the top. These are already bootstrap classes that are in there. And then we'll make a similar change here to card body and card title. Take out that div and then card text. And then down at the bottom, add those divs. So that's starting to look better. And you can see we already have form group and form control in here. Those are classes from Bootstrap that make these look nice. And we'll put some padding down by the button or some margin again. So I'll go ahead and uh, do it on the cancel button. Margin left, two. So those are spaced a little better. And now let's make the title field required. So I'm gonna take that one out. And it's that same input field, but now it's got this ng class that says, hey, if it's been touched or it's invalid, then you know, show this message here that says title is required. And so if you actually touch it and then tab out, it adds a red outline around it as well. So that's good for validation. And down here, this edit form is, uh, is not clickable. If you do put something in, 
and you save it, then it's not going to work because our backend isn't up and running. So what happened over here? Oh, we forgot to source our octa.env. So now we can hit save, and it'll work, and it'll go back to our notes list, and we can see it. So now let's make it so we can actually use this search right here because right now if we put you know D in there it's going to bring back. So we need to do some work on the server side. So in our user controller that controls the user's notes we can add a title parameter. And we'll make it optional. So that's how you do that with uh, Kotlin. With Spring MVC and Java, you would have to actually add a request parameter and specify default value. So I really like how Kotlin makes this easy. And then we can say return if title is null or empty, then go ahead and just return the default one. And that's this find all by user. Else repository find all by user and title containing and then whatever value you pass it so let's ignore the case just like you often do and say principal dot name and then we'll also want to pass in that title and then we'll create this on our repository so this is that note repository that's in our demo dot application and Spring Data makes it so this interface and this method will actually create the query for you and pass in and substitute the appropriate variables. So this will find all by the user and any title that matches what we pass in. So now we can restart our server. And let's add a searching for title in here for the next time. We'll probably enter some more data. So let's enter a two and some data. Oh, and it since we restarted it lost all the data so we'll add one again and now if we were to search for two we would just get two and if we search for one it won't even be case sensitive so searching by title is all working and now I'd like to add sorting right you can't click on these column headings so let's add sorting so you can do this mostly in angular in the note list we will add a sortable directive So you can see here this is a directive, its selector is any th or table heading that has a sortable attribute on it, sends an event of the direction that you want it to go in. So in our note list component, we'll go ahead and add first of all the headers as a view children and an on sort. And the on sort method is what does all the logic, so we'll grab that and just move it down a bit right after ng on init. And so this gets that event and it goes ahead and resets the other headers and then sets the column and direction. So in note filter, we'll need to add that column, as a string and direction as a string and reformat that. And now we can modify in note service to take those into account. So here's find right here. And we'll first of all, pass the sort to the server side using filter dot column and comma filter dot direction and then we'll need to change this up a bit this return method so it's not just returning a list of notes there's a content that has a list of notes in the the new response that we'll get to shortly. And so that's a map from RxJS operators there. So now we can update the note list to have sortable. Not on the ID because we don't care about that one, but let me change this just to a number because I think it looks better. And we'll also have on sort. And we'll pass in the event to that. And then we'll copy and paste that down to the next column, our text column. And now let's add finally some 
CSS in our main CSS. And so this will show an arrow using this data image. Arrow. And we do need to do some configuration on the server side. So Spring Data has excellent support for searching and paging and sorting. You can do size and it'll bring back a certain size. You can also have previous and next links and pages and sorting. So the sort is sort equals name comma description or descending rather name comma descending or ascending so that's what we're going to be sending so we do need to do some updating to our user controller add pageable as an argument not from awt print that is a mistake that's easy to make so grab it from org spring framework data domain and then you'll pass it in to the repository and then in demo application you can add it here so again pageable and again it tried to use AWT why AWT why so import from spring Okay. And while we're in here, we'll need to return a page now instead of a list. We need to change this to a page as well. And let's modify a data initializer so there's a bunch of data in there and we don't have to keep adding it. So we can change this list of to be a 4x and 0 of 1,000. And we'll save note x and for our current user so that's whatever your email address is mine is matt.rabel at octa.com we can go ahead and restart our server our client is automatically restarting itself whenever we make changes if we were to go to localhost 4200 and log in you can see we're logged in there's an error back here it didn't like so I figured it out. I forgot to delete the sort variable when the direction is not passed in. So by default, you don't want a sort parameter. So now you can see we have all of our notes. And if we click on the title column, uh, we forgot to add to the note module. So we have to add sortable here. That sortable header directive. Now we can click on the title and you can see it's sorting as we expect it to. Now let's add pagination with ng bootstraps ngb pagination component. So we'll start in the filter so notes filter by adding a page the default will be 0 and a size the default will be 20 because that's what spring data returns by default and just after the table in our note list component we'll add some pagination code. So we're using NGB pagination. The max size we're just going to say is 10, so that's how many pages will be displayed across the screen. Collection size will be based on the total, and then filter page and size, and when we change the page, call this on page filter, and then we'll also have how many items can be on each page. So we'll need to add, first of all, it's not recognizing this NG bootstrap component, and that's because we need to add it to the note module. Make sure you have a comma in there. And then you'll see it recognizes that. And now we need to modify our list to have those variables. So first of all, the total. And this is a convention to add dollar sign when you have an observable. It's kind of like a hint to yourself. Number and then we'll modify the search method to set it so whenever it calls search set this total to this note service and we'll have a variable in there called size and then we'll add the on change and on sort and we'll whenever we sort let's reset the filter page to be back at one or the first page so the on change will just set the page size 
and the odd page change will go ahead and execute the filter and I had to do the minus one to get everything to work with spring data correctly and then to get the UI to display it correctly I had to do that so I think that works or it works good enough for a demo right and then we'll update the note service to add a size variable again it's an observable Now let's change our find method to have those sizes and the page. And add a comma there. And we'll also, when it comes back, need to set this.size.next to response.total elements. And we can set this to any so there's no complaining down here and we're getting somewhere so we got a, a fitter error here where is that at that's in our list component okay so fix that now everything's compiling and now if we go here and go down to the bottom and you can see we can paginate to the third page and we can also make this a bit wider and see that we can do just 10 items per page or 100 items per page so that's all working you have a, a fully functional data table that has sorting filtering and pagination pretty slick huh so one of the things I wanted to show you is you can actually do all of this very quickly and easily with uh, J hipster and the Kotlin support for J hipster so um, there is a Kotlin blueprint that overrides jhipster's default Java backend and it uses Angular and Bootstrap and Spring Boot all by default so I already have jhipster installed you can see 6.6.0 I also have khipster installed or generator jhipster Kotlin and so what I can do is create an application right from this file here so go back to my home directory kill all of Java and we'll create an easy notes directory and then I'll create this notes.jdl in it and what this does is it configures a base name and it overrides any defaults that jhipster has so authentication type by default is jwt I like OAuth better we're gonna use Gradle we're gonna use Elasticsearch so we get that search functionality and we'll use Protractor to prove that everything's working. We're going to include all entities. Our entity is defined here. It's just a note with a title that's required and a text field. That's a blob, so that gives it a bigger text area on the client. And then our relationship's gonna be many notes to one user, and we'll add pagination as well. And then we can use khipster, import JDL, notes.jdl. So now we can start the Docker containers that we'll need for Keycloak and Elasticsearch. So Keycloak is the OAuth provider by default just because you can run it in a Docker container. So that's pretty darn convenient. And I'm using OhMyZSH and I have jhipster plugin installed. So there's some shortcuts that I can use. So Keycloak up. We'll go ahead and start Keycloak. So if I was to show you what that looks like. There it is. And then I can also do jhes up. Or Elasticsearch in a Docker container, and then I can start the application using Gradle W. And then once it's started, I can go to localhost 8080 and sign in to Keycloak using admin admin. And you'll see it populates it with a bunch of data by default. And if I were to add a new note, first note and tie it to my admin user then I can search for it but I also want to show you that you can prove your whole app is working using npm run e2e this uses protractor and runs tests for everything so we'll go ahead and run npm i just to make sure that's installed and then npm run e2e
And so you can see all those tests pass, so pretty slick, you know, and uh, what, 20 lines of code or so, we were able to develop a whole Spring Boot app with Kotlin on the back end and Angular on the front end and use Bootstrap to style it all. And so you could do it manually, like I showed you, or you could do it with JHipster. So thank you for watching today. You can find my team, Octodev, on Twitter. You can find me at mrabel on Twitter. And we also have a YouTube channel. We'd love you to subscribe, and we hope you have a wonderful day.